it's good. So, so, so anyway, we've gotten this far. We've already started talking. It's been, we've been recording here, I don't know, seven minutes and I still haven't um, introduced oh. you properly and nobody good. knows what you do. <laughs> well, let me just so, why don't you tell everybody what you do? <laughs> All right, everybody. My name is Dave Basset. That is a nickname, by the way. My business is Bassett Studios. I'm a commercial photographer, and I am a that's really all I wanted to do once I figured out that I was not going to be a forestry uh, person in the forests of the Pacific Northwest, uh, nor was I ever going to be an accountant. And I uh, got some good advice from a very good friend of mine. Uh, he, his father gave it to me. He said, Bess, say, whatever you do, pick something that you really like because you're going to be doing it for a long time. So that kind of ended my accounting studies at a community college and I continued with my photography. I grew up in Menlo Park a little bit in that Sunset Magazine headquarters. So I went and visited the, their photo department and they were, you know, I got good advice at that early age. Brooks College, Brooks, uh, you know, photography in Santa Barbara, uh, Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. There's also Rhode Island School of Design. I mean, there were, you know, some places to go. Some were more art oriented. Um, others were more photography. And, you know, I really... I knew at that time that I could I could go apprentice in a studio as an assistant, but I didn't know anything, and that I could maybe learn from you know being an apprentice or an assistant uh, in maybe eight or ten years, or I could go get a degree. Which at you know um, at that age it was people urge you to get a degree and make something of your life. So uh, that's what I did. So I got a degree and I worked and I had the wonderful experience. And this you you may appreciate this. I kind of had a house in Pasadena that I had up to five rooms and studios to rent to other art center students. So, you know, I kind of finished off my photography career or studies at art center with watching illustrators paint canvases, paint different things. You know, I learned all about uh, Nova color down in Culver city and how to get gesso. And if you go on my Instagram, you'll see a picture of a globe. And, you know, I, I so I did arty things as well as a, uh, as photography. Things. How do how do people find you on Instagram? What are you under on that? Is it under your business or Bass Studios on Instagram? Bassett Studios. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So so you so photography. I mean, there's a lot you can say about photography, and in sure. terms, it's clearly very obviously a creative field to be in. Um, and I've known a lot of photographers, and you guys are odd. Um, yeah, <laughs> Um, but, uh, but I, I, have, I've tried to do it. I'm not good. I'm not that good. My wife is a very good photographer and, and, um, it's funny because it, one of the main things I always say when I meet a young photographer, first of all, I say, where's your camera? Mm -hmm. Used to be, it used to be better because, uh, now they just pull out their phones. Right. But uh, I said, a real photographer always has a camera nearby because you never know when you're going to need it. Right. Right. That's kind of, that's what I always tell them. And then I uh, always tell them about the story about my wife and I, uh, we went when we, uh, you know, when we first got married, we went on a, a really great trip to Europe and we were in Italy. And I remember being in, um, I believe it was Bergamo, Italy. And I remember walking where they're looking at the beautiful roads and the churches and the buildings and, you know, and, and she just stopped and she started taking a picture of a wall. Right. And I'm looking around at the scenery and there's just nothing but beautiful things around us. And she's taking a picture of a wall. And, right. was, and I'm like, what are you doing? And she goes, never mind, never mind, leave me alone. And she's, she's really in, interested in this thing. And, you know, we pass and we have a great time. We come back and she develops the film because, you know, she had the old, she, in her bathroom was all set up as a dark room. And, sure. and so she, she, she was developing the film. And then I, I'm going through the pictures and I see this one of this like wall and it's like the texture and then the shadow of, of a plant was on it. And there was the corner of a bike that was like leaned up against it kind of, and it was like framed beautifully. And it was this right. thing that I never saw. <laughs> That's a composition, what, come on. I know, but I never saw it. And I was just, and it was one of those uh, things because I saw a lot of things and I'm a creative guy. I've been doing art my uh, whole life, but, yeah. I, but it, I missed that. And I think uh -huh. that's interesting about photograph photographers is a lot of yeah. times I think photographers frame things and they consider moments and they, and they capture moments. And, and, and it's about your relationship with, you know, like literally zeitgeist. I mean, you guys capture zeitgeist, um, you know, and I think that's kind of an interesting thing to focus on instead of uh -huh. contemplating your navel and just like sitting back and 
what am I going trying to say? What am I trying to do? Right. Your work is instantaneous and then it ceases to exist. And then only on this, this, this machine that you're carrying it in. But it, it, in, in the essence of everything, it, it vaporizes. It's pretty much gone unless you took the time yeah. to stand exactly where you are looking at oh, that yes. thing. Yes. I mean, so you really, so maybe we just, at the outset of our conversation and our creative courage talk and, you know, just identify, uh, photography clearly follows in the path and the history and the roots of the Renaissance painters and paintings. You know, they developed the camera obscura and other devices that allowed them to copy people's faces very accurately. I don't need to go into that. If somebody's curious, I'm happy to give that narrative. It's on my BSFA images narrative website. But um, today, so fast forward, you know, film and Polaroid and transparency film was a great medium. It was very difficult as an agency person. You can remember, you know, part of the trust of hiring a commercial photographer was you knew you were going to get properly focused and, and, and process transparency color film. So um, negative film for many purposes, maybe wasn't quite as sharp, uh, but today we kind of, uh, so for the other I'll bounce around a little bit, but for the other interview I did with Don Kramer for my BNI group, I did I polled and researched with a photographer friend of mine, a colleague in Reno, Nevada, and then I reached out to a photography colleague of mine in Albuquerque, New York, uh, New Mexico. And what we, what I, you know, I asked whatever, fifteen questions, and and uh, one of the things that we that they agreed upon was that, uh, th that there's a lot of photography and a lot of content out there. And if you're a business, you need today you can utilize all that stream of imaging that, that's being created and, and it, you can put it on this temporary thing that's the super fast highway of facebook and instagram and i don't know if, i'm not a twitter person but you can have a picture on there um, but we also agreed and more importantly we were talking about you know do you see your career changing greatly you know due to the prevalence of these you know the iphone 12 and 11 series can, uh, phones were great are great um, and, and we said, no, you know, we, they said no. And I agree with them, you know, a business that you, that, that has a story to tell that has branding and messages to convey to their customers and to their public need the solid cornerstone type of pictures that tell their story solidly. So, you know, one of my, one of my favorite boasts for me is that I can go back to clients. I don't have I never had a ton of clients, but I can think of one or two from the nineties. And if I you go to their websites, they're still using my pictures from that long ago. I mean, so that means that we did an effective job at that moment. Um, and then we made a picture that answered the question or told the message or told the story. And that's to, today that's maybe overutilized with, uh, you know, your storyteller. I mean, you know, now I like to say that I, create relevant and meaningful images that can be used across, you know, multiple media platforms. I mean, that's, that's the goal. So I'm, and, you know, I'm, I'm okay talking about this, you know, an agency range for a little bit, we can bounce to maybe the creative stuff at the end. Cause I do make some money with my creative photography and yes, staring at walls and bark and there are surprises and discoveries to be made even today without the dark room. So, yeah, but what, what, are, what are people missing? Because uh, I think that a lot of people need photographers but don't realize right. they should hire them. They think that they can do the work. And, it, well, and I think that's a problem because it, I, it's, it's just like, uh, it's just like uh, and I, I referenced this in my other talk, and I'm not going to bring up the story again, but um, the, the basically the, it's, it, it's kind of like handing someone a Stradivarius Sure, sure, the Stradivarius can produce amazing music and everything, but do you know how to use it properly? Right. And there is nuance to the skilled photographer that uh, the average person can't get. It doesn't matter how good your phone is. Yes. You know, it really doesn't. And, and, and I think that, it, you know, sure, you, the picture you took looks nice. But is it doing what you want it to do? Is it expressing yeah. what you want it to do? And so I think that's the missing link. So yeah. talk a little bit about what you think the, the devaluing of the, the, the industry 
is now with all of these people getting access. I mean, we feel it too in marketing. I mean, yeah, people can pay a dollar to get a logo now. Yeah, <laughs> or exactly. Or 99 cents, a, a yeah. penny for a stock photo. Right, so, you know, it's silly, but go ahead. All right. So this I discovered about halfway through my 15 year, my first 15 years in Las Vegas. And it was that I went out on a photo shoot, was with a, you know, prestigious, you know, advanced art director within the agency. And we had all the resources and the talent and, you know, producing models and wardrobe and locations and permissions and everything that we needed to, you know, take care of a, of a picture. And then now we're spreading film out on the table and the art director says to me, yes, get out all the other stuff. I know there's more than 21 pictures, you know, from these three shots that we did. I'm thinking, wow, you know, I gave him the best seven of each. So, uh, he, we get him out, we're looking through him, and, and the question is, don't you, Dave, don't you have any pictures that say X? I don't remember what his phrase or his word is or what he was looking for, and the light bulb kind of went on after he went back to his advertising agency offices with the 21 shots and maybe another 10 or 15 that he wanted. You know, had I known that he was looking for X, there's no way that we would have ever missed it. I had every that resource at my disposal, and I would have brought more things to, to reinforce the message of that. So I, I developed a little narrative for myself. When you work with agencies, they oftentimes answer this in advance of you, but message, so they call it MRPE. What's the message that's conveyed via the visual content? Resources are the required shot elements. P is the plan which is a viable consensus. Everybody agrees how hard and when we're gonna work. Uh, and photographer, producer usually makes that. And then E is the execution. You bring the image to life. And you could substitute a few words here and you could call that your advertising agency or your branding agency's credo as well. You know, this is definitely, these are how you make marketing things in my view. You know, and I think that's, and, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of narrative that um, you may encounter yourself to get a really good result. And I remember I couldn't pre break the preoccupation of my art director. He wouldn't talk to me. We didn't sit down and have two or three 30 or 40 minute conversations before we went out to the job. He was just checking the boxes. Send me the sheets from the model agency, send me pictures of the location, uh, make sure you know what time of day we want to be there. But we didn't ever get into, you know, this, what the picture was supposed to feel like, you know, the emotion. I mean, we have emotion. It was success. It was a campaign for Summerlin. So um, it was easy. I mean, it was, we didn't miss. But what I have experienced later in life and later in my career or after that point um, is that the surest way to get the results that you're really happy with are oftentimes much conversation in advance. So you kind of winnow all the things that you don't want to do. Not, the problem isn't, think about this. The problem isn't, uh, there's plenty of things to photograph and there's plenty of times a day to be out there and there's plenty of ways to make that picture or project look good. So, but let's just focus on the thing that you really think that you want. So it's, you have to get there. And this will make perfect sense to you when you're sitting there looking at film or now looking at your favorite pictures from a photo shoot, you're going to be editing and selecting the pictures that say something that you want. If it's a portrait of a, of a leadership type of person, you know, you want that person to look wise. You want them to have wisdom. You want them to have a twinkle or a sparkle in their eye. You maybe want them to be uh, fraternal or paternal perhaps. So, you know, not only are those the words that we're going to edit towards in post, but those are the words that we're going to direct to on the job. And it would be, you know, and I, I really don't know the equivalent in an ad agency if you guys were storyboarding up, you know, a couple of comps, but, you know, he would have version A and that address something and you'd have version B and maybe address a variation to have version C. But I mean, this MRPE is how I like to get people on board. And I will tell you this, it's the secret to success and that here's where, where photography and clients fail and it happens to me all the time I can tell when I have somebody doesn't really care about what the result is because they don't want to talk about it in advance they've hired me they've seen my work and maybe I've been referred to them and then they don't you know 
do you want to include this thing in the foreground? Or do you want to shoot over it? Do you want me to come over here? And do you want people walking by or not? Those aren't the types of decisions and variations that you want to put into play on your shoot day, unless you already have your favorite thing picked out so that you attain what the client wants. And now we can throw a little bit of extra for you. But it's a painful process, I get right. it. Right, and I think that you've, you've effectively terrified any young photographer wanting to get into the industry. And I, I, I think, I think, this, and I, think this, this, it, I mean, you're, you're really going at this thing very deeply. Well, and I know you're, 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 you're coming at it realistically, and these are a lot of, there's a lot of honesty coming out of you here. Yeah. But uh, sometimes it's funny, because all I could think of while you're talking is, you know, a lot of times people are asking us to build a house with smoke <laughs> you know well, it's, okay. it, it's 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 something that we can't you something that's so difficult yeah to do because you're not given the materials you're, you you can see the materials they're there but sure they're not, they're not they're not there's no essence to them and you shouldn't as a creative and an artist need that you shouldn't you shouldn't need it. You shouldn't need people to give you exactly what you need to create this idea. Mm -hmm. You should be able to be given smoke and make a house out of it. That's the, wow. that's, that's the frustrating thing that I think is a struggle. And we might wow. disagree with that. A little but, bit, but, but I understand. This is, this is why, this, let me explain myself a little bit more. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can't expect people that that don't see the world the way we do. we're creatives. Okay. Okay. I know you are one. It's, I, I, I it's guaranteed to me because you just seem <laughs> slightly <laughs> agitated by, <laughs> ah. and, and if, and you know, you're coming at things with like, it's like, it's like, it's a bit of a struggle. And I think that that is the mm -hmm. core of a good artist is somebody who's <laughs> struggling through this thing and always yeah. searching and never satisfied. And I think right. that's important. Yeah. Uh, I think that people, they hire, people that are creatives because they either don't have the energy or the time or the skill or the, they don't even know where to start. They sure. know what they want, but they don't know where to do it with it. Right. So the expectation that they're going to give you all the things you need is not really what is going to happen. And right. I kind of call it forecasting sometimes the mistake sure. that they make. This is what the people, what people need to understand when they hire a creative, people need to understand where they hire a photographer or a, a mural artist or anybody that's creative is you're dealing with lots of egos and the person with the, with the pocketbook has got an ego the person with the skills has got an ego. And uh -huh. what they need to realize is the worst thing you can do is tell the artist, I want a blue answer to my question, mm. as opposed to saying, I want an answer to my question. Mm. Cause when they say, I want a blue answer to my question. And I think, you know, we, we might've talked about this. Everything the artist is, does now, they have to question because if you're not, your path doesn't look like it's leading to a blue thing. Sure. And you feel like you're not really in the right vein. Well, they might not know. Well, it, let me give you this. They assume it's blue, but then maybe it's wrong. Maybe it shouldn't be blue. It, All right. Let me give you this correlator. Have you had this client interaction? Alex, I love your agency, love your creative team, love that creative director. Uh, we really don't know what we're looking for for our campaign. But I have some experience in this field, and I'll know what it is when I see it. Right. Yeah. So that's the worst possible thing that can happen on photography, unless that's unless you have a category and you have a budget and a, a payday for let's go and try some things, let's go and shoot some pictures, let's go explore it and test out. But I've literally had a client tell me on a job that, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Dave Passe, but you know the, what you're showing me here on the laptop, I don't know what I want. I can't tell you what I want. All I can tell you is I know it when I see it. So that's a very, I try well, to head that off at the past. Well, now, okay. and, and, and so it's, a, and I'm, I'm not a journalist by any means. I'm really not a PR shooter either. I mean, I really want to be involved with, with uh, clients that want to create lasting, you know, pictures, stuff that they'll put a little bit of effort into, or at least a little bit of thought, you know, when you have that lower, price point the pictures can be disposable who cares you know for a project i just did of a woman that runs some gas stations uh, she runs car wash gas station convenience store and a food counter you know uh, that's two thousand dollars okay she 
uh, and she knew a little bit about the industry. She knows a couple of other photographers in town. She knows a couple of creative directors in town. And, you know, I think that was a little bit of a mm, price that she accepted as realistic. And I, that generated some confidence in Bonafide. She patiently met with me twice. We got 24 goals and we picked 19 and we executed. But um, you could easily see that that person may have made a yes decision at $500 with maybe a different photographer. And if it didn't really work out or all the pictures didn't work out, it doesn't matter. If she got, she would just line up and shoot again, right? Because you're not at risk for much. Does that well, make sense? It does. It does. And, and that's one way to, um, to approach it. But can I go back to your original narrative, which was, the client saying, I know, I'll know it when I see it. Yeah, so that, yeah I would like your uh, experience. I have a take on this. What do you got? Because I've had this happen. Exactly. And, and again, it's not, it's fine if they say that. It's, it's not a problem yeah. if they say that because of the, because there's a whole other side to this. Right. That, that a lot of, I think people struggle with and is, and is, and it's, it's totally uh, relevant to what I do because it's used in all the time in wording. Okay. You're talking about marketing. Yeah. The pitch. The pitch. Right. Now, the pitch is relevant to everything when you're when you're delivering a piece of art because right. the thing about it, okay like you go into a restaurant you're looking at a menu well you're looking at a picture of a dish you have no idea what it tastes like <laughs> you have no idea what it what it what, what's in it but you're looking at a picture and you're making a decision based on this picture All right. but then you consider the fact that when you walk into a restaurant you're smelling food mm -hmm. right? you're sitting All down right. there's an environment things are clean that's why you have a boardroom with the cool art on the walls. And right. And then, and then there's an experience there. And then there's right. also the waiter's job is to enhance or try to make you want to buy that particular dish. Now, if somebody sure. says to you, um, I don't know what I want, but I'll know when I see it. You have control over what they see, not by just what they physically see, hmm. what they think and they feel about a thing. You have an entire life of, of, of wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the craft of photography well, that you can present this picture and, right. and enhance it even more visually and saying, this is this picture. This is the reason I took it. This is the time of day. I thought this was important because it connected to this. And yeah. when you said this in the meeting, this led me in this direction. All right. See, all of that stuff might help them justify those feelings that lead them into saying this is actually what i want because people don't know most of the time just by looking at a picture but they would know but I, i'll i'll play along with you i'll play along with this narrative. <laughs> no, push back i'm five minutes i'll give it to you slightly differently let's say you have copywriters either staff or that you freelance out yeah and they're right? amazing and they cost some <laughs> amount of money the better one better ones cost more so how would you like it if that client said, I don't really know how I want my copy to look or read or feel, but I'll know it when I see it. So you, the, the, really what I was trying to do and what I kind of keep in mind is, you know, there's a level of uh, a budget that gets uh, matched with a level of effort. And really what I try to do in commercial photography or even my scenic assignment oh, job I that I get as well. So I want that stuff to match. I don't want to go I call it uh, the day of the photo shoot is not the day to go fishing and try out new ideas. You know, that you want to have happen at a different time in the process. You know, if you were like, I wish you would have had a helicopter. <laughs> exactly. Or an airplane, <laughs> which I just flew around in an airplane for a prospective project. So um, I would give it to you this way. You know, you're, uh, you're printing brochures for a client. You're ready to launch a website and you've already had the cut you know you've engaged with the copywriter the client comes in and says i don't you know i'm not feeling it but I, I can't tell you which direction to go in but i'll know it when i see it really what i'm trying to do is push you and your mindset up against that deadline you know you have an executable you have a whole lot of other factors going on you have a website that you're ready to launch you got roi thoughts going on with either the person at the table with you or at least their leadership consensus group so you know i my my premise is the day of the photo shoot is not the day to go fishing. It's not the day to monkey around. You know, you, and like I said, it doesn't, yes, you can, but you need to give me a thing for this. You know, if we're going to be here at 930 for, you know, 45 minutes before we strike and move to be somewhere else at 1015 or however the day goes, usually you have a half hour move and strike and back up in between if you're trying to push out a lot of content in one day. You know, you need to know when you can move, pick up the sticks and move the camera to that next place. You know, when you can 
dismiss that talent that's in front of the camera. I'll give you a perfect example how it applies in commercial photography, especially if you have talent. And this is my example. So you have talent in front of the camera that you're directing there to do something. It's uh, work from home. How great is it to live in this neighborhood out here in the outskirts and suburbs of Las Vegas, Nevada? It's so fun to live here. You can even have a meeting with your boss on the golf course. Okay. Uh, what do you want? You know, you want to see rapport. You want to see some synergy. You want to see collars loosened. And, you know, these guys are super happy. This guy just got hired and brought in and promoted, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's the last time that you want to hear the client saying, I know, I'll know what it is when I see it. Let's start with a target. And if you want to make a, a variation on that, that's fine. Otherwise, you're really just creating a scenario for man with camera. Bring all the stuff to the shoot, bring all the lighting, you know, and uh, I'll start, I'll tell you which way to face. I'll tell you, I'll tell the talent when to go and I'll be the art director, the decision maker over your shoulder. You know, you really want, I, I want you to give that back to me as the photographer. Let me help guide you and let me do the things because right. we're, and we've missed a whole other thing in photography. This is part of my narrative that every time you can add something to the photograph, to the composition, to the set, the scenario, that makes the picture 10% better, 7% better, 6% better. I mean, these things all add to the compelling and captivating quality and quantity of that image. These are the ways that you make the pictures last a long time. You know, that's the wardrobe that matches. That's the letting the one guy walk in front, okay, and slightly behind, or we switch that, or that's, you know, this guy's really amazing looking when he faces the camera from this side and that side. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, we plan to do this from kind of like eye level, but let's try it from a little bit above eye level. Let's get the, you know, let's get all this green, you know, this is the office, it's just a field of, you know, manicured golf course behind. You know, those are the nice little things that you can do. I mean, there's going to be so many things that you want to do to add to that story. Once you get there, you don't, want, you don't want, you need those words to, look, a photographer is a director, 100%. Listen, you, you, that, a photographer is an artist. And, oh. and, and, and the, no, I mean, that's, there's no question about it. And you're just what you said. What do you mean? In the way that you described just now, all the stuff you just said between uh -huh. the moment when I last talked all up to now, uh -huh. everything that you described about Jeez. your craft and your knowledge of the craft and your vision of the craft. That's what I'm freaking talking about. Well, is, okay. is carrying that in no i'm just i'm not i'm just saying i'm I, i'm just saying that's well, that's what people pay for okay all of that is your awareness and your knowledge and your your consideration of things and your vision of things and right. and adding that a lot of times people are resistant to to things oh. and i think that they're resistant to saying to you this is what i want because there's no trust but when you come in and you prove to them that you know what you're freaking doing here mm -hmm. and and because the way that was kind of beautiful what you just said i'm glad i got it recorded hey. because i think that it's 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 something that's valuable and i'm all right. you go back and watch yourself all right mark me down for one you'll impress yourself well. <laughs> you'll impress yourself with what you just said i got and one I in think, a row <laughs> and I, yeah no but i think that this is the other th reason why i know that you're a true artist is that you know, there's these moments when you express this, your genius and you have sure. absolutely no, no idea that you did it. And I think that's, that's, that's freaking great. And I love that. I love that so much. And uh -huh. I think that that's part of, of what it's about. And that's what people pay for. That's what, that's what, that's what people are looking for. Is that well, part of, of what you're bringing to the, to the, to the game? So really, my, my, I, so this is what I implore. Other photographers that are out there maybe listening to this, even some agency people that are wrestling with, you know, the difficulty of a client in nature can be, and, and I am taking issue or uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to arm wrestle on this one throughout, I think a little bit, because I think you need to commit to a direction. And if, the, and you start maybe working in that direction with some of those results and looks, and if the client sees that, you know, to however many iterations you're making, and then they go, Hey, you're the artist. This isn't really what I'm feeling. But I'm hoping at that moment in time, they will find, and this is, they speak this from their business. Again, I'm not taking this picture just to satisfy me. I want to help you sell homes. I want to help you establish a brand for a neighborhood. I want to help you establish a brand for, you know, your builders in your community. You know, clearly I'm not a builder. I don't build community homes and I, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not a big landowner. So you, 
the client or the representative of the client are in a position to help me. And so think about that, you know, okay, you know what? I wanted blue, but I didn't realize there's cerulean and Prussian. And there's even something called sea foam, which is a little more toward green. Yeah. By golly, you know, look, Las Vegas is thought of as a dry desert community. If we go with that sea foam, I think we're going to inspire some of these people coming from the West Coast a little more to be happy here. You know, maybe but they can't have it in their backyard. Well, they can. There's plenty of ponds and what have you. But um, we're, we're on the same page, man. We are on the same we're page. Just in just, different, we're just in different cars going the same I just direction. want to tell you that, you know, I... <laughs> I like to work hard like that. To me, yeah. I, and I don't want to be that prima donna. Uh, yes, of course, I know what you want. I've done it a million times. That isn't really fair. It's not fair to your prospective client. It's not fair to your team. It's not fair to your artistic soul either. Because I don't think I'm being hired. I mean, I think perhaps I'm being hired to produce something because I know how to get, you know, 15 shots done in seven hours. Uh, you know, I know how to organize the day so that the easy, you know, I know how to, I understand the principle of tripods and cameras and lights and laptops and, you know, verifying that we're done with one shot and how we can move on to the next one. It's interesting though, that I would think that most people, they don't really, I mean, at the artistic level, like where you and I are, maybe at an agency boardroom with a creative director or agency owner or principals. Yeah. They might like to hear that narrative. Client doesn't really care about it that much, but really all I want to demonstrate to the client is here's what I heard. And, and I could, I'll give you a couple more examples, but, and I don't mean to hog the conversation, but. Um, <laughs> well, I am interviewing you. <laughs> yeah, well, let me, I'll, I'll break away too. So I was in, I worked in Oregon for eight years. I was a commercial photographer. I did many wonderful projects. They are on the landing page of my website or some of them are. But I was invited to go talk to a company that builds lumber mill components for the forestry industry throughout the United States, Alabama, Delaware, Florida, uh, and they hired me to go to Alabama, but I had worked for them. That was actually last summer. I went to Alabama, but I did manage to sit down with the owner of that company. And you know what? That guy's writing a check to me, Alex. And I want to make sure that the pictures I'm writing to him work. And he, among the other things that we talked about in the conversation, you know, he said, he said this, and it's, it, it, it is kind of at the discovery or the intake phase of working with a client. Uh, this is a person that builds $15 million things. At any one time, there's only maybe 90 potential customers he has in the United States. And at any one time, there's only five or six of them that might be looking to replace a component of one of their lines. And, you know, I, this is fun for me to be in industry. I love it. A typical lumber mill line in an active thing is something that's like two or 300 yards long from where the lumber gets debarked and gets cut and it gets milled and it gets planed, and it gets dried, and then it goes back out, and it gets cut up again. There's a lot of room for improvement all along those ways. But this owner of this company, West Coast Industrial Systems, said, Dave, I don't care if you cost me $5,000 or $10,000. I need a photographer that's going to go out there and tell the big picture story for me, okay? And that's all I ever got off this guy, and that's all I ever worked to. And you walk in their offices in Lebanon, Oregon, and my pictures are on their wall. They're big. We made big pictures, you know, and again, when he's looking to meet those, you know, he's looking to rub shoulders with those 90 customers and he's looking to have more interesting conversation with the five. I mean, he's doing that at, at the trade shows, right? They don't really need a website. Doesn't really need an ad campaign. Doesn't really need marketing material. He needs, he needs, he needs those things. But, um, but that's me figuring out how to get up high, how to get back far enough, how to use a telephoto lens and shoot vertical pieces and then put all those together because, so I get to use the physics of the lenses and the behavior of the, of the camera and the technology that the scientists brought. Thank goodness, you know, you can sometimes give Photoshop, you know, 10 pictures and it'll put them all together pretty good. Um, it's, I just did this shooting out of the window of an airplane. It's not as easy. Photoshop didn't like 12 pictures trying to put them together from an airplane. You're moving. But I was able to build the left side, the right side, the middle side. Back to my West Coast industrial client. They like me. I did a really good job. I told big stories. Even inside the mill, we're able to, you know, you got to think, like, the guy has a problem. You're selling him a solution here comes the lumber on this side. Okay. If we improve, put one of my machines over here, 
and then it comes down here and then here's this other piece that the other guy made but then here's the pieces that i made you know they might not make every single thing they'll make parts of it so as far back as you can get and as much as you can zoom in because when we zoom in on the on it on an image and this is more akin to landscape but you're really telling the person where to look uh and you're preserving scale by the way so instead of taking a wide angle shot of this here comes the art part right wide angle lenses we love but a tree in the middle of a wide angle picture is going to be this tall and the same tree at the same level is only going to be this tall at the edge of the frame so you have this very short right behind the subject vanishing point there's my illustration terminology and talk now i use <laughs> now i use well it's perspective it's it's <laughs> a diminishing perspective right now i can put that vanishing point way out in the horizon that causes the person to be compelled and, and captivated by this picture they scan back and forth let's just even say their eye retention on that picture lasts longer you show wide angle boom they see it one look but I'm, I'm good let's go to the next thing you know the longer you can get them keeping so that was a success with that particular yeah. person and it came from he didn't want to go to lunch with me two times trust me he's got other he's building 15 million dollar things he has daily 15 million dollar problems and he's got to talk to this uh, you know pretentious artistic i don't want to use swear words but you know <laughs> i don't really know what he thought of me initially no. even at the first but yeah it worked and it continues to work for him. So well, I think that's, that, that's, that's pretty interesting. And, and again, you know, it's, 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 you're, you're going deep on this stuff. I think it's, it's oh. kind of interesting. And I think it's really interesting for people, anybody that's watching this that like me is interested in creativity and, and the, mm -hmm. the acts of creativity and, and, and what the impressions and how it works. Sure. Um, saw it in action just now. Because again, wow. I, I, I hate to keep analyzing your responses, but there was an entire seminar worth of information <laughs> that you were, you you somehow were able to kind of go do, do, and go through a bunch of layers and get it get it all done and right. express, express yourself. But I could see that your head was going over here and then you shot over here and scooted this over and then grabbed this and threw this on top and brought it over here because you had a point you were trying to make and you were heading towards that point and you had to bring in this information to carry us through so we were well armed for what we we're expecting to hear. Oh. So it was like, this, you know what I'm saying? So I think that this is, is kind of what I'm talking about. Well, it is a very busy place inside my head. Um, yes I'm and so, as it should be and as it should be oh. and 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 i think that that this is interesting because it is <laughs> a display, no it's a display of the the uh, of of and I'm, i know we're getting off photography but i think it's really important for people to understand the p potential of really delving deep into a craft and right. the nuances of it right. and, and how each thing is connected to another thing Okay, and, and that wisdom and that knowledge is really important to me, and I okay. think it's really important to potential clients. It's really okay. important to potential um, artists that are looking to get into this craft as well. Is right. to hear seasoned people be very passionate about it, with a tad right. bit of frustration carrying right. forward. <laughs> right. Which I well, think, think again is incredibly important. Think about yeah. it from this perspective, especially for the entry, you know, let's say the, I mean, I've been doing this, I hate to say, but you know, 25 years, mm -hmm. not exaggeration. But you know, when you first start out, the easiest thing to do is to go for the lowest, you know, be the lowest bid on a project. That's the easiest, com that's a very comfortable zone for a customer. I experience this oftentimes in Oregon, you know, we're trying to get in at different clients or different agencies, you know, they didn't want to have that much budget. They didn't really want to engage in the pre photo shoot conversation or the messaging type of words or identify the targets. It didn't really matter to them. They didn't care that we were going to put adults and kids in a private exclusive private school and that we were going to arrive at nine o'clock. They didn't know where they wanted to be for the first shot or the second shot or the third shot. And that I said, what do you, how long do you intend on keeping talent there? Well, I can tell we're finished, but probably, you know, after lunch one or two. And I'm just thinking, you know, I've worked with kids, you've worked with kids, I've been on shoots. There's no way that a kid is going to go to a school wearing his nice clothes, a school that he doesn't have any classes in or have to even be there. And there's no way that kid's going to be doing the right thing at 1130. And he's been there since 830 in the morning. I mean, that's a recipe for disaster. But not as a dig against any kind of agencies. 
it didn't really matter if they told the agents, if they told the client we're going to get three pictures and they only got two and a half. Sometimes the attitude is, well, they really like the two and a half and those are great. Hey, now we decide we want another two and a half pictures. Can you put your team back together and go out again? You know, when I approached this particular project and created a team, and I said, well, why don't we try to get seven things and we can bring the people in in stages. We won't, you know, it's, some, it, it's too much effort and work sometimes. So it, it needs to match. And here's the thing to think about. If you're not getting the right amount of money that you want for a photography, you're not offering the right amount of value to the client. You know, put that in your, uh, put that in our creative courage conversation and, and kick the tires on that you know that's helpful right if, if it's valuable well, to somebody they're going to commit to it we like that well we we've hit my my self-imposed time limit <laughs> all right yeah i got 48 minutes okay yeah so uh so uh why don't you go ahead and tell people how they can find information about you and learn more about what you do and see some of your work all right People, please come visit BassettStudios.com, two S's, two T's. There are a lot of other Bassets out there on the web, so choose wisely. Once you make it to my uh, landing page of BassettStudios.com, scroll to the bottom. There will be badges there for my Facebook, my Instagram, uh, my LinkedIn, and, uh, you know, spend a little time. There's some fun art narrative on the BSFA Images website if you're more a photographer that thinks you want to do art but uh, I'm the photographer that wants to do commercial. So yeah, feel free to reach out. I would happily so, talk to anybody. So call him. He's the real deal. I think it's pretty obvious from hearing him talk. He's the real deal. Thanks, so Alex. thank you're you for the real deal too, Alex, <laughs> for sure. I mean, you're a Renaissance man. I had no idea of the breadth and depth of your talents and experiences. Oh, I just get bored easy and I have a short attention span. Yeah, but you... <laughs> anyway, like I said, how no, did I not ever meet you in those years before? Because you're oh, a fun person. I yeah, mean, it's it's we met now. It's all right. We got oh, we're seasoned. We're seasoned. We met now. It's great. All right, man. Th thanks for taking the time. And all right. Um, all right. Till next time. I mean, I'm sure we'll talk again. I'll I'll, I'll talk together. All right. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Bye. Bye. -bye.